Hey gang, Private Jack here. Welcome back to part 11 of my series on how to take an XNA model, uh, get it into a format to bring into Blender, use Blender to edit the model to get it ready for export into source uh, model format. Anyway, make a long story short, this model is almost ready to be exported uh, to source, uh, to valve source format. And what we're going to do now is finish off uh, getting it ready and uh, maybe we'll get it exported. So I'm going to go into ortho mode uh, front view here and looking at the model, it's looking pretty good. Okay. There's a good example of the two or of the one-way mirror effect. So when you're using this model, you'll have to be careful when you're uh, filming it. See the gap here between the sleeve and the arm? Well, there's no materials on the back side of the model. And because of that, you're getting that effect of being able to see through the model. The only way to fix that is to actually edit the model and put some sort of material or uh, put some vertices on the arm uh, to close off that gap. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial series and I'm not going to go there. Another thing I could do is I could actually, um, let's see, can I do it? I could actually join the uh, model uh, model parts together and make one model out of it instead of four separate models and uh, edit I'm throw in an edit to join these two parts together but like I say that's beyond this particular scope and if you want to get into that particular uh, Avenue, what I suggest you do is go and read up on modeling and source filmmaker and that kind of thing on the Steam developer website. But anyway, in order for this model to go into uh, Valve's source format uh, and be compiled, what we have to do now is we have to create what is known as a sequence. Uh, if you don't create a sequence, what will happen is uh, the model will not compile. There has to be at least one sequence to a model. And that's why you most always see a reference or a uh, idle sequence on a model when you're using it in Source Filmmaker. So, that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the second layer. So down here on the layers, we're in object mode. Click on the second layer and make sure your cursor is centered in the mesh or in the uh, in the grid. So Shift S, cursor to center. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a simple cube. So in object mode, Shift A, add uh, mesh, and come up here to cube. It doesn't matter how big this cube is, it doesn't matter if it's the same size as the model, if it's just a little guy like this. Uh, the thing is, is that this is going to be our idle uh, animation for the model. And it's like I say, it's required. Now, before we can use this particular thing, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up here into the Object Property tabs and we're going to select the Object tab and we're going to change the name of the cube to Idle. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to split our screen again and we have to give this thing a texture. So we're going to split our screen again and the way I did that was this little uh, things up here, see the little lines there, hover your mouse over until it turns into a crosshair, hold down the left mouse button, or yeah, the left mouse button and slide it to the left. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change this screen to a UV screen, like so. And I'm just going to resize this a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to go back into the editing screen, make sure the object is selected, and press tab to go into edit mode. Let's get my screencast keys back up again here. Screencast. There we go. There's the keys. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to unwrap this model so that it will put uh, the unwrap model onto the UV screen. So what I do is I go uh, key U for unwrap, and I'm going to come down here to smart unwrap the uh, part uh, the project. So smart UV the project. Click enter, leave everything normal, and say OK. And what that will do is it will unwrap that cube. Cube has how many sides? Four, six, four, six. Now it doesn't matter what texture we give this, but what we want to do is we want to give it a texture that uh, is already known about. So over here we're going to select the texture tab, or the materials tab rather. We're going to add a new material. Uh, no, actually, we don't even have to add a new material. We're going to click on these little arrows here, and we're going to select body. What that will do is it will load the body materials that we've already created. This is a material that uh, that uh, is already known. And so now to, let's see. That selected all. I gotta select all these cubes. I'm going to assign this texture to that particular mesh. So I'm gonna click assign so that if I deselect it and reselect it, it uh, selects. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and on these two little up and down arrow keys, I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to go up here to Ralph Main Taga. and select that. That cube now has the body texture assigned to it. That's done. Okay, so let's see, is there anything else we need to do here? Uh, we called it idle. We don't need any vert uh, vertex groups don't need any of those because it's already assigned to the whole cube. Materials are assigned. We're done with that. Tab out of edit mode or select object mode here. If I tab, I'm back in object mode. And there's our idle animation. Come back into the normal screen. First uh, layer where Ralph is. Ralph is ready to go. Our idle uh, animation is ready to go. And Bob's our uncle. Now, next thing I need to do is I need to assign proper names to this guy's objects. Okay, And the reason why I want to do that is it makes it simpler for writing the QC. I do not want to write a QC where the body name is 24 material 26 underscore 1 underscore 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that object, come back here to the object tab, and that's his hair, so I'm just going to rename that to hair. In the vertex groups, here, I'm going to select that and I'm going to rename that to hair. And you'll see that that disappeared and now became hair. Select the next material, or the next uh, object. This is the body. I'm going to call that body. And again, I've got to select the object and change that to body. 
So I'm changing the name of the object and the vertex group. Select the next object, and this is uh, feet and hands. So I'm just going to call this head. And the vertex group, I'm going to call that head. Select the next object. And this is the eyes. I'm going to call that eyes. Into the object. Change that to eyes. And we have now just renamed all the body parts. Now I'm going to select the armature. And I'm going to call the armature, the object name of the armature, Ralph. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to call this Ralph. So now we have <coughs> the armature Ralph with all his little bones and everything else listed and we should be good to go. Just to prove that everything still works we're going to select the armature. I use the right mouse button and I just click until the armature becomes uh, highlighted. I'm going to go into pose mode and I'm going to select the bone. And I'm going to rotate that bone based on its active element. And we can still see that everything moves. Select the thumb. Everything's still moving great. Spine. And to get back, if I happen to hit the wrong key, uh, like if I hit the uh, left mouse button and he stays in the pose mode, all I have to do is do a control Z and he'll go back to the original position that I moved him from. So rotate. Uh, while I'm rotating, if I just want to have him go back to his normal position, I hit the right mouse button. Okay, so it looks like everything is working hunky dory here. Notice how the mesh stretches. Okay, now if I try to grab that bone, well, it's not connected. I thought it was connected. Okay, that's good. Go it up here. Grab. Good, they aren't really connected. If they were connected, I wouldn't be able to stretch that bone. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, we're going to close off the UV screen because we don't need it anymore. I'm moving my cursor up to the lines here until it turns into the crossbar, holding down the right mouse button, and dragging it to the right. Notice the arrow. And we are ready to start our export of RELF to SMD format. So, coming up here, into the Scenes tab. Click there. I'm going to scroll down until I find something that says Source Engine Export. Right here. This is that uh, plugin that we added for Source or for uh, SMD, DMX, VTA, and QC files for Source models. In here, what you see are the models that are going to be created. Right now, they say DMX. I have not had much luck in uh, actually compiling DMX models. I'm still studying up on the, on the situation. Um, what I'm going to do is up here under Source Engine Export, I'm going to change that to SMD. Notice here that the actual uh, models have now changed to an SMD extension. From here, what I need to do is I need to tell it where I want to save the models and what SDK 
uh, package I want to use to do the actual model in. So I'm going to click on the little folder here and I'm going to point back here to the uh, file folder that I created. And that's the XM, uh, XNA-SMD folder. I'm going to select Ralph and I want his SMD files to fall into this particular folder. I click on accept and you'll see that it is relative path. Next thing I want to do is I want to tell it what SDK package I want it to use. So I'm going to click on the folder here and I'm going to point this to C program files x86 for our 64 bit guys, Steam, Steam apps, common, source filmmaker, where are you? Source filmmaker game bin and this is where the SDK uh, programs live so if you look in here you'll find hammer you'll find the QCI's and all the VD, uh, the uh, DLL's required for compiling the model okay VRAD um, yeah that kind of thing so that's C program files, x86 for our 64 bit guys, Steam, Steam apps, common, source filmmaker, game, bin. Accept that. And once that's done, guess what? We're going to export this model. So right here, I want to export five objects. Now, SMA, or, um, this version of Blender may crash, but what you do is you go and you have a look. Well, let's just give it a try. So I'm going to export the model. Click on Scene Export. It'll whirl and curl and whatnot else. And up here you'll see five files exported. Blender did not crash. File save the Blender file and minimize. Minimize that. Now let's go to that folder. So on my desktop, that's an A, SMD, Ralph, and here are those five SMD files. So it looks like everything exported and we are now finished with this particular part of the series. We've taken a model from XNA LoRa, uh, put it into a format that can be read by Blender. We've imported that model into Blender and we've edited the model so that it, it uh, conforms to the uh, Valve uh, source model format. We textured it in Blender so that uh, the SMDs now know what textures they need and by that I'm just going to grab the head SMD here and I'm going to open that in Notepad++. So if I scroll down here this is the SMD file triangles body it's using the body uh, texture And that's what we have to make sure that we uh, call our textures. Uh, let's see, hair uses the hair texture. Keep using this. Come on. Notepad. Plus. There we go. Okay, this is the hair. It's using the hair texture. Yada, yada, yada. So on. Okay, so we've now uh, 
textured model. We've uh, changed all the bone names. We've uh, fixed the bones so that they're connected in the proper way. We deleted unnecessary bones. Uh, and we've exported the file now into the valve source mo uh, model source format. So with that, what I'm going to do is next session we're going to talk about the textures and making the proper folders for the textures, uh, making them the proper format, creating the BMTs, and getting this thing ready for compile. So with that, I'm going to say Private Jack out for now.